All right, so we'll continue Canto 5, the creative impetus, chapter 5, Lord Rishabhadeva's teachings to his sons. So, text 2, no? Yeah. Yeah. Now this, uh, this verse is also a very important verse. <coughs> Actually, his teachings, most of his, of this, uh, his instructions are very good to review often, so you can remember them. <coughs> so anyway, text 2. Mahat Sevam Dwara Mahu Bimuktes Tamo Dwaram Yoshitam Sanghi Sangam Mahantaste Samachitta Prashanta Vimanya Vasuri the Sada Vohi one can attain the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly advanced spiritual personalities. These personalities are impersonalists and devotees. Whether one wants to merge into the Lord's existence or wants to associate with the personality of Godhead, one should render service to the Mahatmas. For those who are not interested in such activities, who associate with people fond of women <coughs> and sex, the path to hell is wide open. The Mahatmas are equipoised. They do not see any difference between one living entity and another. They are very peaceful and are fully engaged in devotional service. They are devoid of anger and they work for the benefit of everyone. They do not behave in any abominable way. Such people are known as Mahatmas. So he pre pretty much he gives you the definition, characteristics of a Mahatma. So <coughs> if you want to know what a Mahatma is, Rishabdev has already given you a good definition. Uh, now, uh, for some of you, you may think it's uh, interesting, but the, uh, when we talk about transcendentalists, it includes impersonalists as well as devotees. So you shouldn't feel uh, surprised that uh, even Rishabh Dev says they are impersonalists <coughs> and devotees. That means they also understand this uh, existence in this material world is not something they want. So they are trying to attain transcendental life, but they may not understand uh, the personalist view point. But still, because they are trying to help others to get out of this material lifestyle, they are considered Mahatmas also. Of course, from uh, yeah. So, Prabhu, in this case, Prabhu says it personalists. This it personalists also includes Mayavadis. No, no, these are not Mayavadis. Okay. Yeah, not Mayavadis. Mayavadis are different. Huh? We are not the, here. We are not talking about the Mayavadis. <coughs> so, therefore, there are two types of Mahatmas. One is an uh, impersonalist. That means they seek happiness in the Brahma Jyoti. That kind. Brahma Vadis. Yeah. And the other one is the Bhaktas. All right? Or it could be Paramatvadis or the Bhaktas like that. Okay, so. Like, uh, like the four Kumaras. Yeah, like the four Kumaras, Shukadev Goswami, and so on and so forth. Now, how, one of the key things that he mentions, apart from giving the characteristics, is that he says Mahat Seva. You, you notice it's always service, you know, yeah. the whole Bhagavad, Bhagavatam is always based on service to the right people. You can serve anyone, <laughs> but uh, the emphasis is serving the right person. So therefore, when you serve the right person, you get the right association, the right results. So Prabhupada therefore highlights from Chaitanya Charitamrita the verse, <coughs> 
असत्संग त्याग ए वैष्णवाचार श्री संगी एक असाधु कृष्ण भक्त आरा वन शुड अवॉइड बैड एसोसिएशन बेसिकली हू डू यू अवॉइड यू अवॉइड एनी वन हु इज नॉट ए डिवोटी ऑफकोर्स अवॉइड मीन्स यू डोंट टेक द एसोसिएशन इन योर केसेस यू आर वर्किंग Uh, you have to interact so that's not what he's talking about he, he what he's talking about is taking uh, from them associate with them and taking what you feel oh this is so nice they talk like that right? because most common people are very materially attached and particularly they are attached to either men or women i mean nowadays it's very hard this are based thousands of years ago so at that time men are supposed to protect women and so therefore they are easily also bewildered by women also so therefore it says uh, particularly women so vaishnava a vaishnava char means he will not uh, associate with them he will avoid them uh, if they are not devotees so therefore we don't associate with two materialistic people okay and then there are two types of materialist proper mentions one is attached to women and sense gratification the other is simply a non devotee so there's this two types so you should know this also so there's two categories so what uh, rishabh dev is talking about uh, that on the one side is a positive association means mahatmas negative association means non devotees and women hunters or men hunters now this right they they hunt anyway so basically the main point is you serve someone who very advanced and you serve without any expectation then you get the right result okay text 3 मयिषे गृहेशु जयात्मजरातिमत्सु न प्रीतियुक्ता बॉडीजिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगीपिंगी
such people. And, uh, because generally what people do outside, maintaining body, uh, maintaining homes, uh, maintaining eating, sleeping, mating, defending, that's what uh, even uh, Rishabh Dev is saying. Even if they have house, they are not attached to that property or stuff like that. They are not really. Uh, because ultimately what they want to do is, they are interested only in doing what? Krishna. Uh, huh? Attached to Krishna. Yeah, attached to Krishna, but they want to show that duty has to be done, but you don't be attached to the results. So here particularly in this... Uh, Verse, uh, Rishabh Dev is saying how an householder need to live their lives. So all of you are householders, so you all should. Okay, this is a good instruction. Uh, so this chapter is good for all <coughs> devotees to read on a daily basis if you can. Text four. Munam Brahmatta Guru Devi Karma Munam Brahmatta Guru Devi Karma Yadin Griya Brita Ya Aprinoti Yadin Griya Brita Ya Aprinoti Nasadu Mani Yata Atmano Yam Nasadu Mani Yata Atmano Yam Asana Pikle Shada Asadeha Asana Pikle Shada Asadeha when a person considers sense gratification, the aim of life, he suddenly becomes mad after materialistic living and engages in all kinds of sinful activity. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he has already received a body which, although temporary, is the cause of his misery. Actually, the living entity should not have taken on a material body but he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, I think it not befitting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material bodies one after another. So again, Vishwabhadev is trying to uh, make it clear to his sons, you know, yeah, sure, you, you have to do many things, but don't become fools. <coughs> Basically, he's saying, in general, those who don't know the aim of life, right? What is our aim of life? Krishna. To develop Krishna. the love Krishna. of God. Yeah. So if you don't know that, then you have to fall back on your senses. Yeah. Then that leads to sense gratification. And certainly, you cannot enjoy your senses completely. Therefore, you become crazy. You try all methods and you never become satisfied. And so in the end you end up becoming sinful. Uh, generally people who don't know the goal of life, uh, if you don't know the goal of life then you don't know what to do, therefore you will commit sins. Uh, it's very logical because you don't know this is right or wrong. Uh, sinful <coughs> life is due to ignorance, ignorance. that's all. Yeah. If they know they won't do it, yeah. so that's what it is. And obviously, he also says, uh, the living entity should not have taken uh, on a material body. Uh, so that also means that we are not supposed to be even here. <laughs> uh, therefore, we are not connected with the material world, but because we, have, uh, we are dependent on the senses, instead of the goal of life, we become uh, put into this material conditioning, like that. So again, uh, he already clarified, by associating with Mahatmas, you can get rid of this attachment to material things. Okay? And then we become free from uh, material entanglement and material body. Text 5. Parabhavastha varabodha jato Yavanna jidna sata atma tattvam Yavanna jidna sata atma tattvam Yavat kriya stavat idam manovai Yavat kriya stavat idam manovai Karmatma kam yena sharira bandaha Karmatma kam yena sharira bandaha Karmatma kam. Uh, so here means absorbed in material activities. Uh, Prabhupada says absorb. 
uh, translation. As long as one does not inquire about the spiritual values of life, one is defeated and subjected to miseries arising from ignorance. <coughs> so now you can understand, right? Everything is due to ignorance. Be it sinful or pious, karma has its resultant action, so no choice. If a person is engaged in any kind of karma, his mind is called karmatmaka, colored with fruitive activity. As long as the mind is impure, consciousness is unclear. And as long as one is absorbed in fruitive activity, he has to accept the material body. Straightforward. You know, so, uh, if you subject our desires with the senses, then you are going to do things in ignorance, and that is going to be either pious activity or impious activity. No choice. Uh, because you don't know spiritual value, so you are forced to act, right? The spirit soul has no choice. He is, something he has to do. So out of ignorance, he will take up that activity and that binds him again. <coughs> and again yeah? So, in general, what do people think? We have to be good pe people, right? You, you talk to most people, oh, I have to be good and nice to people. So they don't understand what this is, being nice to people and so on. Uh, but that's not saving the soul. You know? It's just superfluous. Uh, you know? Oh, you know, you go to someone, you just touch their shoulder, and rub them, and that's being nice to them. <laughs> but you know, you're not saving the soul. Dress. <laughs> huh? You're saving the dress. External dress, yeah, uh, like that. So therefore, uh, for most people, if you talk to them, they think if you act piously, you are okay. You, you shouldn't be suffering. But what they don't understand is they still suffer. It's just confusing for them, and therefore they say, "How? Why are we suffering? Why this nice kid got killed, or that person got drowned, and stuff like that?" Uh, they're not able to understand. Uh, but actually, there are, even if you do pious activities or impious, misery is always there. It's a fact. So no one can escape that. So therefore, Prabhupada says, even though one engages in pious activity and speculation, he is nonetheless defeated. How can he become uh, happy? You know, he, he always gets entangled in something. Uh, so therefore, it doesn't solve the problems of material life. Uh, rather, Krishna says one has to have the transcendental knowledge in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so if you have transcendental knowledge, then you can know what to do. Therefore, he says, right? Uh, Jnana Agni Sarva Karmani Bhashma Sharkurute Tata. You can finish those uh, simply through the fire of knowledge. All reactions of material activities <coughs> can be put out like that. So we should therefore become curious for the right reason, not curious to enhance our senses. Okay, there's a difference here. He's, he's wanting his sons to understand this uh, point very nicely, you know. So, if we do bhakti, bhakti is for who? Krishna. Krishna. But if you don't do bhakti, then the activities is for who? Someone either someone or yourself. So, either someone sends gratification or yourself. Therefore, there is reactions. Yeah. Or if you just sit down and speculate also, it's just for yourself only. So, therefore, anyabhilashita shunam, jnana karma anavrdi. Right? We don't want all of this. Thing. Anavritam. Nothing cannot have be included in uh, bhakti. It cannot be selfish anymore. It has to be selfless. So therefore, when you do bhakti, uh, Prabhupada is wanting us to understand it should be only exclusively for the pleasure of Krishna. And which is what Rishabh Dev is telling his son. All his sons, he's telling them, has to be done for the Lord's pleasure. It's very important. It's not for us to just say, oh yeah, this is great, you know what he says. Um, you have to become introspective. Okay? And then you have to see how you can also adjust your lifestyles to focus more and more on Krishna. Otherwise you will eventually get drawn into the wild, wild west, you know. <laughs> and you are the one who will suffer. No one can help you. Uh, your guru will come every now and then, he will lasso you back but then you still get dragged down. <laughs> yeah. Text 6. 
मन कर्म वशम प्रयुंते मन कर्म वशम प्रयुंते अविद्यात्मनि उपाधियामाने अविद्यात्मनि उपाधियामाने प्रीति नयावन मई वासुदेवे प्रीति नयावन मई वासुदेवे नामुच्चते देह योगी नतावा नामुच्चते देह योगी नतावा When the living entity is covered by the mode of ignorance, it does not understand the individual living being and the supreme living being, and his mind is subjugated by fruitive activity. Therefore, until one has love for Lord Vasudeva, who is none other than myself, he is certainly not delivered from having to accept a material body again and again. So, Vishwadev himself is telling his sons, "I am no, supreme God, none other than myself. <laughs> none other than myself. That's a, that's amazing. But uh, you know, the, which is why you find in uh, practically people who come across Bhagavatam." They get confused and they think, "Oh, who's up there saying he's God? I also must be God." <laughs> and so they create philosophies based on statements like that, which they don't understand. You can't take sections of the Bhagavad and say this is uh, pertains to me. No, <laughs> to know the whole Bhagavad. That is why, from the very beginning, Janmadi Asya Yata, so that they defines who God is. And then now, when you read, you know, I'm not God. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> So it has to be done properly. We have to understand the Bhagavatam properly, not just fill, uh, you know. Oh, I know this. I know that verse. Big deal. Uh, everything must make sense properly. Huh? So here he says, and he clarifies very clearly: one cannot be in ignorance. You know, uh, oftentimes we argue on the basis of ignorance. When you have knowledge, you find you cannot argue unnecessarily. <laughs> Because why? Because you accept the truth. When you accept the truth, then you are standing uh, in front of the Lord naked, so to speak. So that's the difference. Okay. Uh, so therefore, you are not in ignorance. Krishna Chandra. <laughs> Krishna. So, in ignorance also means they don't know their position. Right, so you will find so interesting that uh, the Mahaprabhu's teachings uh, and so on. Right, Jivera Swarupoy Krishna Yena Nityadas. Finish. That's it. You know, no argument. <laughs> very, very clear. What's your position and who is in charge? That's it. You are just a servant. You never. You find Mahaprabhu say we are equal to each other. Never like that. So therefore, we find that uh, point. What uh, we have to take is. Uh, we come out of ignorance when you accept that fact. Okay, that I am a servant. As soon as you accept and you act on that platform, you are out of ignorance. Of course, the forces of material na- nature will act on you. It tries to act on you because you are still <coughs> in the embodied platform. But you know who you are now. It's a different scenario altogether. Right? Just like you take misery, for example. Right? If you want something so desperately, and if you can't get, how you feel? Jealous. Not jealous. You feel frustrated, frustrated, frustrated. miserable, because you can't get it. You, know, so you can't get it. But if you understand, I don't need it, and then when the same object is that, you don't feel miserable anymore. What is the difference? It's the state of your consciousness, right? It's how you perceive totally. It's just perception. So therefore, material happiness and distress is all perception only. That Krishna says what? Martha's parsus to contest. Titos na sukha dukha. You know, winter and summer. Cold, we go out. It's so cold. I wish summer was here. <laughs> and then summertime, they say it's so hot. I wish winter was here. <laughs> Silly people. <laughs> so anyway. This is the point Rishab Dev is trying to emphasize to his sons. Huh? Actually, not so much to his sons, rather more to the listeners, all those other people. Uh, so, therefore, if you are materially motivated, then you think the goal of life is to work. Therefore, he says, 
one becomes subjugated by fruitive activities. Karma Kanda seems to make more sense. You know. So all these are based on ignorance. If, they, if you just remove ignorance immediately, you know, I really have to work for my own spiritual life. Yeah? So therefore, mind becomes polluted, Prabhupada says, by this, all these fruitive activities. <coughs> therefore, he, Prabhupada says, because he is so much interested in fruitive activities, he is trying to make his fruitive or his material life better. And in, in fruitive activities, what is the best uh, material life? Heavenly planets. Heavenly planets. planets. Yeah, that's all. So therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Brahmandu Brahmati Kona Bhagya Vanji. So you go up and down, up and down. <laughs> Funny, you know, like a yo-yo. <laughs> the whole thing is like a yo-yo. Up and down. Right? You play yo-yo, right? Goes up, goes down, goes up and down. You know? <laughs> and the living entity is so excited. <laughs> because is, but then, so much struggle to come to understand uh, that this is all a waste of time. Therefore, some Mahatma Sudurlava. Very rare people understand this thing. Very rare. So you can see, you know, how many million people in Seattle, how many, how many people really, you know, come to Krishna's uh, doorstep. You know, very few. And even those who come are only interested in what time they serve Prashad. You know? What time is Aarti? What time Prashad? You know, I got something else to do. <laughs> yeah. so. so it takes a long, long time. Actually, um, if you read carefully, you'll find uh, nectar devotion and so on that a person even to get Shraddha takes millions of lifetime. So if you say I'm giving some people some sukriti, agyata sukriti, that also takes many lifetimes to build up, to come to Shraddha. So, yeah, don't, don't be astonished. That's what happens. First you give somebody a book and if it really purifies, they come through. It's amazing. But you do not know whether it's some Sukriti or they are almost ready. You do not know. But your job is to just distribute and, and give Krishna like that. Uh, but in reality, if you read, it takes many lifetimes for that Pious activity, they come and cut vegetable or wash a pot once in a while. That will take many lifetimes to say, what, what is all this thing about <laughs> Krishna consciousness? To come sit down and hear, and, hmm, interesting. So that is Shraddha. Uh, but if they met a few devotees, at one moment the whole fortune changes. That's the Lava Matra, Sadhus. But Prabhupada often says that if you give this book, even if they read one verse or yes. even one word, yes. they are benefited. Because that's yes. his benediction. That's Prabhupada. Okay. Yes, that's his benediction. Okay. Uh, so if they read favorably, they get their benediction. Yeah. I think I heard many times in Prabhupada's lectures, he, he, he said, I created your good book. Yes. So otherwise they didn't have, they didn't have any chance. Now. Yeah. So we all, uh, yeah. due to Prabhupada's yeah, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> So therefore, this is a very important point to understand. Um, until you, you develop love of Krishna, and like I said yesterday, you need to actually ask the Lord's mercy. You have to pray to Prabhupada, to your spiritual master, to, to devotees in general. Please be merciful to me. Uh, then, then you will have taste for chanting also. As it is, we are struggling to chant something, you know. It's more like counting, Prabhupada says sometimes, don't, don't count. Uh, the whole idea behind chanting is to beg, beg, beg for the mercy, you know? Otherwise you are just stuck here. Text 7. Yadana pasyati ayata guneham Yadana pasyati ayata guneham Swate pramatta sasavi pasche Swate pramatta sasavi pasche Gata smriti vindati tatra tapam Gata smriti vindati tatra tapam Asadya maitunya magara magnya Asadya maitunya magara even though one may be very learned and wise, he is mad if he does not understand that the endeavor for sense gratification is a useless waste of time. 
second chapter, first canto. Shamaya Vahi Kyokula. What is that based on? That Shamaya, if he does not. There was the interest to hear about Krishna. Yeah, the message. The message of Krishna. Does not evoke the message or the attraction for the message of Krishna. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a useless waste of time. Being forgetful of his own interests, he tries to be happy in the material world. Centering his interests around his home, which is based on sexual intercourse and which brings him all kinds of material miseries. In this way, one is no better than a foolish animal. So what we are seeing here and what he's talking about is, for those who haven't <coughs> quite taken up bhakti yet, there's a lot of people who are wise, they read maybe scriptures here and there. They are the, at the level where they are actually practicing or, or from their point of view they are not, but they are like animals. <laughs> so they are trying to enjoy senses, pretty much. But they are good people, you know, from an external perspective or they are philanthropic, they give charity, stuff like that. So they are, you know, learned. They gone to college. <laughs> they're wise. They give charity. So they must be good people. But they are still at the lowest run. Almost, you can say they are animals. Animals, actually, polished animals. Right? Shri right? Prabhupada says in that verse, right? Uh, Naradama. Hmm? So they're one and one of them. They are. So Naradamas are like that. They, are, they may be educated and so on. So this is what he's saying. Uh, if he doesn't understand that this sense gratification is not the, not the goal of life, it's simply a waste of time. Uh, so we, are, we are therefore understand that to, to take our bhakti, you, you, you have to endeavor or you need the mercy. Otherwise this is what will happen. Uh, otherwise they are no better than a foolish animal. That's what he's saying. It's a heavy, you know. It's a heavy statement. <laughs> Text eight. Pum shastriya mituni bhava metam. Pum shastriya mituni bhava metam. Tayo mito ridaya granti mahu. Tayo mito ridaya granti mahu. Ato griha shetra. Sutapta vittai, Atogriha Shetra Swatta Vittai, Janasya Moho Yamaham Mameti, Janasya Moho Yamaham Mameti. Attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception, which ties together the hearts of the male and female, one becomes attracted to his body. Home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one increases life's illusions and thinks in terms of I and mine. This attraction, male and female, is, is conditioning. Huh? It doesn't matter whether they are man, man, woman, woman also, but they think like male and female. Okay? So therefore, that attraction, attractive principle, existence in material is always there. It doesn't matter how, what conception they have. So, so therefore, we see them and we say, yeah, they still have this misconception. Uh, so therefore, the Hridaya Granti, very hard knot in the heart, no? based on sex, is actually. Uh, I was just thinking, 5,000 years ago, Sutta Goswami does not have to give this kind of explanation. <laughs> <laughs> because this concept probably did not exist so much. No, they didn't have to worry so much about this. <laughs> People pretty much knew who they were. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, you know, nowadays we have to, so the people can at least understand what it is. Yeah. Uh, so Prabhupada writes very nicely in the purport, uh, sex serves as a natural attraction between men and women, and when they are married, their relationship become more involved. Due to the entangling relationship between men and women, there is a sense of illusion whereby one thinks, this, is ma this man is my husband. Or oh, this woman is my wife. This is called Ridaya Granti, the heart knot in the heart. This knot is very difficult to undo, even though a man and woman separate either for the principles of Varnashrama or simply to get a divorce. In any case, the man always thinks of the woman and the woman always thinks of the man. Uh, so it's, a, it's a fact though, because 
even when they separate or they take sannyas, they think, oh, it was such a nice uh, life I had. You know, Prabhupada, when he gets sannyas, he say, don't don't have any uh, misgivings. <laughs> that view oh, I took, uh, now I'm missing that. <laughs> so for Sanyasis you were saying that. But in general for everyone, you know. I remember talking to one senior uh, devotee, they are preparing to take uh, Vanaprastha, you know, so Srila Prabhupada's disciple. So then the, the Mataji was telling me, this is not easy, you know. Very, very elevated person, but she was telling me that it was not, it's not easy. She said, now I'm, I, I, when I think about it, I don't want to let it go. <laughs> Conditioning. Conditioning. And then she said, I'm thinking about my son, I'm thinking of my husband, like that. Uh, but, but she said, it's good, now I understand. So uh, I know why I have to do this. And, and so that's encouraging because they are doing it. So the younger generation can see this is a standard. You know? uh, but the reality is, yeah, it's not easy. So this is what Vidaya Granti is all about. You know? You become very attached to it, and you don't want to give up. Uh, if you if you still feel that I don't believe, some people say I I don't think so. Then take your car for driving, and somebody knocks your car, scratches your car. How you react? Hmm? You'll do Lord Shiva Tandava dance, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> You scratch, you, you know, this is the least of the problem now. Nowadays they'll take a gun and shoot you, you know. <laughs> so the point is, yeah, you're so attached to it. And that's exactly what it is. Right? In, a, in a perverted way you see it nowadays. Right? So pretty much you find <coughs> that uh, almost every living entity in this material has this problem. Granti. Nobody is free. Uh, uh, so one has to be very careful, even a sannyasi also must be uh, detached before they can uh, take up. So, Vasudeva Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, Janati Ashubhairagim, Jyanam Chahat, Ahaitukam. So you know how to give up if you take up Bhakti Yoga. It is very clear, the whole process is clearly stated, it's just the practice that we are lacking mostly. And therefore we, we have difficulties based on our uh, impracticality in practicing <laughs> and yeah application of that yeah and therefore we come up with all kinds of problems so Prabhupada then says even personality the Lord Brahma and so on in their case they don't have problems because they have exalted wives or husbands so they 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 have no problems but we can't say oh I'm like Brahma or like Shiva and so on. Uh, they are not for them it's not a bondage they are there to set good examples and in, in, you can read in some cases, like in the case of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he took sannyas, his wife, Janava, was saying, go ahead, not Janava, I mean, uh, Lakshmi Priya. Vishnu Priya. Yeah. So she, she was telling, go ahead. And then she also showed by example that uh, as many rounds she chanted, that one grain she'll put. So one whole round she put one grain. Yeah, so if she chanted 100 rounds, she have 100 grains. That's a lot though. <laughs> it's tougher than that. Huh? It was tougher than that, I think. No, no, that's she how it is. She did severe also. That's what I'm saying. To, all these are examples to show that it's doable to extend. Of course, I'm not saying all the ladies do that, you know, pretty much all of you will fade into non-existence. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> you can't even do any service. Tomorrow only the hosts will be sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so therefore, if, if they understand, if both parties understand the goal of life, then they can work together. That's what it is all about. Yeah. Text 9. Yada manori daya grandi rasya Karma nu baddo druda aslateta Karma baddo druda aslateta Tadajana sam parivarta tesma Tadajana sam parivarta tesma Mukta param yati atihaya hetum Mukta param yati atihaya hetum when the strong knot in the heart of a person implicated in material life due to the results of past action is slackened, mm -hmm. one turns away from his attachment to home 
wife and children. In this way one gives up the basic principle of illusion, I and mine, and becomes liberated. Thus one goes to the transcendental world. I mean, it's, he says it in a very simplistic way. Basically, you get purified, and then just like in the case of Bilva Manga Thakur, right? He was so attached to this uh, Chintamani, and then when he, when he climbs up the sna dead snake and goes into her chamber, she's like, oh my God. So she, she gives him some jnana uh, uh, yeah. from previous life. He hears his spiritual master speaking through her. Then he realizes that's where the past action is slackened. Uh, uh, and then one turns away from all the attachment. So he gives up and he goes to Vrindavan. Like <coughs> so one has to give up the basic principle of illusion. <laughs> I and mine. It's not, nothing belongs to you. You are just the servant. As soon as you accept that you are a servant, you are already liberated, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to sustain that liberation. <laughs> yeah. And then if it's, the longer you sustain, the lo then you go, you go into transcendental side. Otherwise you are just in the, uh, liberated from the material uh, inebriates for, uh, for that time being. Right? So then you, you see everything in line with Krishna. Okay, verses 10 to 13. Hamse Varo Mai Bhaktya Nuritya Hamse Varo Mai Bhaktya Nuritya Vitrishna Yadvanda Titiksha Yacha Vitrishna Yadvanda Titiksha Yacha Sarvatra Janto Vyasana Vagatya Sarvatra Janto Vyasana Vagatya Jikna Sayata Paseha Nivritya Jikna Sayata Paseha Nivritya Matkarma Vimar Kataya Chanityam Matkarma Vimar Kataya Chanityam Maddeva Sangha Guna Kirtanantme Mateva Sangha Guna Kirtanantme Nirvaira Samyo Pasamina Putra Nirvaira Samyo Pasamina Putra Jihas Saya Deva Gihatma Buddha Jihas Saya Deva Gihatma Buddha Adhyatma Yogi Navi Vikta Sevaya Adhyatma Yogi Navi Vikta Sevaya Pranindra Yatma Vijayena Sadriya Pranindra Yatma Vijayena Sadriya Satchadda Yabrahma Charyena Sashva Satchadda Yabrahma Charyena Sashva Asam Pramadena Yamena Vacham Asam Pramadena Yamena Vacham Sarvatra Madhbhava Vichakshanena Sarvatra Madhbhava Vichakshanena Yanena Vijnana Virajitena Yanena Vijnana Virajitena Yogena Drityudhyama Sadva Yukto Yogena Drityudhyama Sadva Yukto Lingam Yukohed Kushaloha Makyam Lingam Yapakhe Kushaloha Makyam Oh, my sons, you should accept a highly elevated Paramahamsa, a spiritually advanced spiritual master. <laughs> in this way, you should place your faith and love in me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You should detest sense gratification and tolerate the duality of pleasure and pain which are like the seasonal changes of summer and winter. Try to realize the miserable condition of living entities who are miserable even in the higher planetary systems. Philosophically inquire about the truth. Then undergo all kinds of austerities and penances for the sake of devotional service. Give up the endeavor for sense enjoyment and engage in the service of the Lord. Listen to discussions about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and always associate with devotees. Chant about and glorify the Supreme Lord and look upon everyone equally on the spiritual platform. Give up enmity and subdue anger and lamentation. Abandon identifying the self with the body and the home 
and practice reading the revealed scriptures. Live in a secluded place and practice the process by which you can completely control your life, air, mind and senses. Have full faith in the revealed scriptures, the Vedic literatures and always observe celibacy. Perform your prescribed duties and avoid unnecessary talks. Always thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, acquire knowledge from the right source. Thus, practicing Bhakti Yoga, you will patiently and enthusiastically be elevated in knowledge and will be able to give up the false ego. Now, basically, all these are, are already packaged by Srila Prabhupada and is available in ISKCON. Okay, you don't have to go and say, I have to do this, I have to do that. Okay, <laughs> scriptures are there. Uh, Srila Prabhupada has already uh, compiled everything for us to read. So always thinking of the Supreme Lord, right? Right? Smartavya Satatam Vishnu Vishmartavya Nadjusi. Right? Sarve Vidya Nishadeshu Etayo Reva Kinkaraha. So, the whole principle is always to remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. Has to be centered around that principle. Whatever your activities you do in your life has to be. Otherwise you cannot uh, perform this properly. Now it's, he says you should accept a highly elevated Paramahamsa. We already have that. Srila Prabhupada. So we are taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada. That's it. So don't go and look for one. If you do then you are a fool. <laughs> you already have that. Okay, then simple things, detest sense gratification. All right, beginning when you are Kanisa is very hard, but you should start saying it's not good for me. Uh, and then you, you should tolerate difficult situations or good situations. Both are practically it's duality. So you don't want to get trapped in that. All right, then you, when you look at other people, what they go through, you can analyze and see what is the joy they are having actually. What is the reality? then you'll realize they're actually suffering. Okay. Primarily what you're supposed to do, Srila Prabhupada told his disciples that they should read at least four hours a day. <laughs> right? So I, I doubt most of you will do even half an hour. <laughs> so what it means is you have to read. Read Prabhupada's books. You have to read books. At least uh, something every day. Okay? He says that, you know. Um, don't identify with the body and the home, but practice reading the revealed scriptures. So every day one should read the scriptures. Then you will become uh, detached. Automatically detachment will come. Automatic. You don't have to, you know, go for some surgery or something like that. It will automatically it'll come. <laughs> you know. And then automatically you will be in a secluded place. Means you, you don't want any more of these material things. So automatically you are secluded. You are only thinking of Krishna. Okay. Uh, so all these are there and we should understand this. In the second paragraph, Prabhupada says, Prabhu, practice the process by which you can completely control your life air. What does Prabhupada mean by that? <coughs> Practice the process, but all the... Huh? He says life will, mind and senses. Yeah, yeah. So when, you, when you do all the bhakti yoga <laughs> process, automatically everything will be controlled. Oh, okay. Yeah, by chanting you're already doing pranayama. pranayama. Yeah, yeah, so all those are there. <laughs> that is why I said in the beginning, everything is there. You don't have to go and do some kind of exercise or yoga or asanas. You don't need to. It's all there. Uh, Obviously for some people, in due to your conditions or so on, you can do some yoga, asana, something. It helps. It's not that it doesn't help. It does. Huh? To help diabetes. Help? To help our diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> so cut down on eating. <laughs> All right. You will find, if you are sincere, the taste for many things will go away. Material things will go away. It, it's a natural thing. Uh, if it doesn't, that means you are not practicing properly. That's all, that's the only thing I can say. You know. Uh, therefore, the the standard you have to maintain must mustn't be minimized based on oh it's okay this and that. No. Uh, 
The whole idea in practicing this standard Srila Prabhupada give is for yourself. You don't, you don't use the rules and standards to judge another person. Okay? It's for yourself. You, you judge yourself and say, no, I'm falling behind or I'm doing okay like that. But don't say, oh, this guy is not doing that. What about you? You have to only take care of yourself. You have to be very strict with yourself and you should be lenient with others. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So here we are talking about uh, good Sangha association. Yeah. So just like when we get together and discuss the Bhagavatam, this good Sangha is good for everybody. Uh, it's very important. Maddeva Sangha. You know, so we all have good sangha. <coughs> so we have to learn to tolerate many things. Uh, this material world is not meant for pleasure, therefore you have to tolerate. You cannot have a phantasmagoria, Prabhupada says, you know, build up castles in the air and say, I'm going to be happy, you know, it doesn't work. All your plans will <coughs> fall. You can be the best parent, you can be the best person. There's always something will be wrong. Eh? Uh, who is the king? Who did very perfect yagna and... Uh, yes, King Nirga. <laughs> and he, he didn't do it purposely. Eh? The cow came in and he gave, he gave what, re-gifting. Just like Christmas gifts, you re-gift and give back. No? <laughs> so he didn't know, poor guy. <laughs> But you got cursed. Just one. Yeah, just one cow. Yeah, right? So, uh, so just learn to tolerate. Huh? Try whatever difficulty, accept it. If you're sincere, you will never be cheated. Even if someone is cheating you, but if you're sincere with the, your service to Krishna and your devotion, he will protect you. And that will be lesson to them. Uh -huh. And there will be a lesson to learn. And there's a lesson to learn, and then you will become stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Bhagwan Sattvatam Pati, yeah, he's your protector. He will always come to protect you, because you're sincere. If you're not, then it's a different story. Then you're under the three modes. Okay. Therefore, you need to practice detachment in your own home, uh, practice celibacy. Uh, celibacy means only uh, according to scripture injunctions one has sex, otherwise one is practicing brahmacharya. Okay? And if you do it illicit, it, it becomes difficult to make advancement in your consciousness. It contaminates your mind to wanting to enjoy the body, so therefore you cannot focus like that. Okay? And then Madhavacharya, uh, in the third paragraph, like that, Srila Prabhupada writes, points out the sum and substance of these four slokas is that one should refrain from acting out of a desire for sense gratification. <coughs> that means if you have the desire, try to control it. And should instead always engage in the Lord's loving service. In other words, Bhakti Yoga is the acknowledged path of liberation. And then he quotes from this Adhyatma, one should perform activities only for the benefit of the soul. Any other activity should be given up. When a person is situated in this way, he is said to be desireless. So you do what is right for the soul, to become devotee, for everyone you help, then you are desireless. Actually a living entity cannot be totally desireless, but when he desires the benefit of the soul and nothing else, he is said to be desireless. We always have desire, that's a fact. You know. uh, but this is the real desire to go back to God here, try to please Krishna. Text 14. <coughs> Maybe Prabhu, you can check. Karma Shrayam Hridaya Granti Bandam Avidya 
अनेन योगेन यतोपदेशम अनेन योगेन यतोपदेशम सम्यक् व्यपोह परमेत योगा सम्यक् व्यपोह परमेत योगा As I have advised you, my dear sons, you should act accordingly. Be very careful. By this means, you will be freed from the ignorance of the desire for fruitive activity, and the knot of bondage in the heart will be completely severed. For further advancement, you should always also give up the means. That is, you should not become attached to the process of liberation itself. That means the process. Go and reading so much. Oh yeah, Bhakti. I know this. I read that. I read this book. Ten million books I read. But are you doing it well? You know, I'm. You know. <laughs> so don't become attached to those things. Just to know for the sake of knowing, whimsically. Hmm? For the sake of uh, taking initiation, whimsical. Oh, everyone's doing. Yeah. But actually, uh, do the process. All right. So Prabhupada says the process of liberation is Brahma Jigyasa, the search for the absolute truth. Generally, Brahma Jigyasa is called Neti Neti, the process by which one analyzes existence to search out the absolute truth. That means you, by the by negation, negation yeah, mm-hmm. elimination. Then you say ultimately there is only one source, and that is the Supreme Lord. And then you understand, then you take up devotional service. So the next paragraph, Prabhupada writes, the idea is to enter into the Parabhakti, the transcendent devotion service of the Supreme Lord. To attain this, one must analyze one's existence. But when one is actually engaged in devotion service, he should not bother seeking out knowledge. Okay? Yeah, no need. Yeah, you don't need to. By simply engaging in devotion service, undeviatingly, one will always remain in the liberated condition. Brahma Boya Kalpati. Yeah. Prabhupada in the last paragraph, when he quotes the Atma Ramas Chamune Yogas, uh, he says one may give up the practice of yoga when one is self realized. But at no stage can one give up devotional service. <coughs> All other activities for self-realization, including yoga and philosophical speculation, may be given up, but devotion service must be retained at all times. So therefore, you cannot give up devotion. <laughs> like, you cannot say, I retire. <laughs> no, there's no such thing. Because devotion service is the eternal occupation of the living entity. Yeah. So therefore, you cannot say, I give up. No. All the other things are uh, like tools to come to that stage of bhakti. ಮೂಢ If one is serious about going back home, back to Godhead, he must consider the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Samam Bonam, and chief aim of life. If he is a father instructing his sons, a spiritual master instructing his disciples, or a king instructing his citizens, he must instruct them as I have advised. Without being angry, he should continue giving instructions. Even if his disciple's son or citizen is sometimes unable to follow his order. <laughs> Ignorant people who engage in pious and impious activities should be engaged in devotional service by all means. Mm. They should always avoid fruitive activity. If one puts into the bondage of karmic activity his disciple, son or citizen, who is bereft of transcendental vision, how will one profit? 
it is like leading a blind man to a dark well and causing him to fall in. Mm -hmm. huh? Very nice here. Yeah. <laughs> so basically we are all supposed to help people to get connected with Krishna. Hmm? Otherwise we are only ruining their life or their chance. Okay, so therefore hook up by crook, you help them. But at the same time Krishna said, don't disturb the mind 